Why did Hex just double in the last 11 days? It's up 100% in less than two weeks. We're going to talk about it. Everybody wants to know why. Everybody wants to know why. I'm going to give you all the reasons. Watch the whole video. It's actually very simple. The reason that everybody hates is the obvious one. Sellers are exhausted and there's more buyers than sellers. You can only make a bottom on a chart when the last person has sold. When the last of the bears has given up and then the bulls step in and they start buying. Now, have we seen that on the hex chart? Let's look and zoom out. We are at all time lows on hex native to pulse chain. Well, we were about two weeks ago, 11 days ago. And now we are back up to 75% of a penny. And guys, when hex pumps, it pumps hard. Okay. It goes hard to the upside and hard to the downside. There's all kinds of reasoning behind that. When it comes to the upside, marketing is a big factor. People don't realize the community is marketing. Okay. All this stuff, all the videos that people make, all the Twitter posts that people make, they're shilling their bags. And that's all everybody really does in crypto. Let's be honest. Okay. But Hex and Pulse Chain, they're just better at doing it than most other coins because most people don't have the attention span to stick with, you know, a normal coin for like more than two weeks. In Hex, you've got people locked in seven years. And so no matter what happens, there's always this core group of diehard believers that's not going anywhere. On top of that, you've got famous people all the time. Famous people love to poke the hornet's nest because they know they get engagement. All right, I'm talking about people like Grant Cardone, even Andrew Tate. Okay, like he doesn't want people to know this, but people have tracked wallets related to his and found that even the Tate brothers are experimenting with yield farming on Pulse Chain. It's crazy. You've got Lil Pump and Takashi69. You know, these are like rappers, but Lil Pump is obviously much smarter than our friend Mr. Takashi. But even when they hate, you know, even when the famous people hate on Hex, they still get more engagement. They know how to get engagement. They're not famous for no reason, right? They're smart at knowing what gets the clicks, knowing what gets the views. You could try this yourself. You know, if you've got like a Twitter account, with a couple thousand followers, if you're new to Hacks to Pulse Chain, if you don't understand what's going on here yet, just make a tweet about Pulse Chain or Hacks. Say whatever you really feel about it. Make it genuine and authentic. You could be a hater. You know, you could be talking crap or you could say why you like it. If you're a guy that only gets like 10 or 20 views on every video, you're going to be surprised. I guarantee you're going to be surprised with the amount of engagement, real organic grassroots engagement that you're going to get. So the marketing machine behind Hex, the organic marketing machine, obviously that's part of the reason why, but let's get into the fundamentals. Okay. The macro and all this. Look, BlackRock is about to start shilling Bitcoin. The Federal Reserve just lowered interest rates. First time in four years, half a percentage point. It's more than people expected. Two weeks ago, people were expecting quarter basis point. We ended up getting 50 basis points. On top of that, you've got election season around the corner. You've got October around the corner. October is typically a good month. Election season is typically a good month. Why? Because no matter who's in power, Republican, Democrat, doesn't matter. The Federal Reserve wants to make the incumbent look good. All right. They want to print more money. They want to stimulate the economy so that whoever is politically in power just looks like the economy is all good because of them. It really has very little to do with the actual president. Like the president doesn't have as much power as people think. Like they talk a big game. They promise you everything possible that you would want, but then they get smacked down by all of the treasury department, all the different departments, the three-letter agencies, the lobbyists, competing interests. So you just got to follow the money. And if you're following the money, BlackRock, the world's largest asset manager, they literally own like the entire world, trillions of dollars. Okay. Now they're finally talking about, oh, the $35 trillion Federal Reserve crisis. Maybe Bitcoin is the answer when really, I mean, people that have been buying Bitcoin, they've been knowing for the past 15 years that Bitcoin solves inflation. It's like a solution to inflation. But now you've got BlackRock talking about it. Meanwhile, Larry Fink a couple years ago was talking shit about Bitcoin. Oh, he's changed his tune. I wonder why. It's because he was buying Bitcoin the entire time he was talking bad about it. Because now that he's, they've bought enough at BlackRock, they own something like, is it like 3% of the total Bitcoin supply? Some incredibly high number. Now that they can sell it to you in their ETF, now that they can make money on your transaction fees, and by the way, it's also completely centralized. It's not real Bitcoin, right? It's paper. So it's not censorship resistant at all. But now that they've got control over some supply, they're happy to show it to you. And they're happy to ride with the narrative that you already probably know. You read this article here and you see all the same stuff that Bitcoiners and crypto guys have been saying forever. The post-pandemic interest rate is predicted to send Bitcoin price skyrocketing. Wow. Haven't heard that one before. I mean, it's true though. It's like actually a, the narrative is legit. BlackRock is finally warning of growing concerns around the $35 trillion debt pile. So they're finally talking about the fact that, you know, we're printing literally $1 trillion of debt every 100 days on average, and there's no end in sight. 
And now all the BlackRock analysts are telling people about it, like saying, hey, maybe, maybe this Bitcoin, maybe Ethereum are safe haven assets that you could run to in case of runaway debt, right? Look, no end in sight. And they're just admitting this now because now they have something to sell you. They have a way to make money on your transaction fees every time you're buying, you know, iShares, uh, their Bitcoin ETF on iShares. And guys, Vanguard's not even in yet. Vanguard's the largest ETF distributor. They haven't even created their Bitcoin ETF. Now their main head of, uh, ETFs got fired or, you know, resigned because they, they were like the only one that didn't do the Bitcoin ETF and they missed out on this huge opportunity. So keep an eye out for Vanguard Bitcoin ETF later on. Maybe that'll be a top signal in the bull market. Who knows? And Larry Fink has said he's been wrong about Bitcoin when he previously dismissed it as an index of money laundering, admitting now that it's digital gold. It's legitimate. Okay. It's legitimate guys. Larry Fink, he says it's legitimate. So let's all listen to little Finkleberry over here. Look, he was buying it the whole time. And what this basically tells me is they're going to put their marketing efforts. Look, BlackRock's successful campaign to bring a fully fledged spot Bitcoin ETF is one of the major driving forces behind the price in 2024. We haven't even really seen the power of what the money they can fund into marketing. They're going to start telling every mom and pop, every IRA, every 401k, hey, you might want to get a little one, or one, two, three percent of your portfolio in Bitcoin. It's the responsible thing to do. You know, meanwhile, they're calling it like rat poison and all this stuff just a couple years ago. Lucky for you, they can pump our bags while we can have crypto on chain. We, we can do it the right way. Pulse chain, Ethereum, Hex, uh, holding your own private keys, doing real on-chain, real DeFi, real decentralized finance. That's the point of crypto. It's holding your own private keys. And you can just do that yourself by staying educated right now. So look, Federal Reserve cuts rates, like I just said, 50 basis points. This is more than we expected. This is all part of the reason for Hex pumping. But this is the macro, right? So at the end of the video, I'm going to talk about what's happening on chain, like with the actual, like the micro zooming in. But if we're zooming out, look, Fed's cutting rates. They're probably going to cut rates two more times. They're talking about one more 50 basis points, one more 25 basis points, meaning you're going to have like 4%, around 4% Federal Reserve rate by the end of the year, probably. The economy is in a good place and our decision is to keep it there. Yes, Jerome Powell. Pump my bags, Jerome Powell. Jerome Powell is the chairman of the Federal Reserve. And Janet Yellen is the Treasury Secretary. These guys, they, they work together to turn on the money printer, basically adjusting the Fed funds rate, buying back bonds, or adjusting the reserve requirement for banks, which they don't really need to do anymore because it's zero. There's zero percent reserve requirement for banks. It's, it's insane. Let's talk about the elections. Okay, October comes after Rectember, and then comes November, which is election month. Now, a lot of people are freaking out about Kamala Harris and versus jo uh, Donald Trump. I get it. I get it, guys. I probably want the same as you. If you're a crypto bro, if you know anything about crypto, you should really, really consider voting for the candidate that actually knows what they're talking about, that actually has a crypto policy. And if you look at the existing incumbents, which is uh, Kamala Harris, literally, she's the vice president right now, under the incumbents rule, I mean, they've done nothing but been hostile to crypto in the USA. Now, here's why I'm saying it's not the end of the world, no matter who wins. Obviously, you know what I think. Okay, you should know what I think. Just read between the lines. But check this out. Crypto News Australia. Over 80 executives support Kamala Harris. Look, they're doing what everybody does. They're doing what Sam Bankman fried did. They're just donating to both sides. Okay, crypto is finally in a place where they can lobby. So they've got lobbyists now. We're, we're mature enough to be an actual donating millions of dollars to Trump, to Kamala. It doesn't matter because at the end of the day, that's how lobbying works. Okay, money talks and politicians are actually pretty cheap to pay off. Be surprised, you know, the president only makes like 450k a year, right? Now, now Trump is like a businessman, so he's actually got real money. Most of these politicians are without politics, you know, they wouldn't have any money. So they have these crazy high speaking fees and, and they just get um, basically bought and paid for. So including the uh, Ripple co-founder, look, even Brad Garlic Breath, Brad Garlinghouse out there, I mean, he's playing the game, right? He just finally beat the SEC. I'm sure he's very unhappy with the SEC. So why would he be donating to Kamala? Because money talks. And look, they're urging Kamala to fire Gary Gensler. So it's like people need to realize that a, a Kamala win wouldn't be the end of the world for crypto. They're still donating money. Congress is not happy with the SEC. Crypto companies are not happy with the SEC. And guess what? Coinbase is like one of the most profitable companies out there. All the crypto exchanges that make a whole bunch of money, they're the new banks. They're the new power. Like they're the new money. And if they can buy out Kamala Harris to do their bidding, that's what they're going to do. They're probably donating to both parties. Okay. 
So I'll, I just want to point this out to maybe ease anybody's fears about, you know, the election having like a catastrophic effect. I mean, it might be short term bearish, like people are going to be pissed off if she wins. But look, Ripple co-founder has endorsed Kamala, boo, aligning that with Ripple history of supporting. So they're just, they always donate to the Democrats, sure. But this is the most important point here. You know, Gary Gunzar is under fire from both Democrats and Republicans. Nobody likes him. Congress hates him. All right. They've done nothing but stifle innovation. They're driving companies out of the USA. Valuable crypto innovation. We're falling behind. People are getting sued for no reason. Arbitrarily, capriciously. Uh, they've been corrupt and incompetent in many times with relation to crypto specifically. And many are calling for his replacement, both Trump and Mark Cuban. Look, both Trump and Mark Cuban, both sides. All right. Just want to leave that out there. And I want to tell you that, you know, maybe the market has decided that they care less and less about Gary Gensler, about the SEC fears. That's another reason that Hex pumps and doubled overnight is, you know, people are starting to care less and less. The fear is starting to wane away. The fear of the big bad SEC, the big boogeyman, when you realize that they can't shut Pulse Chain off, they can't shut off Hex. They can't really shut off Ethereum or Bitcoin. I mean, that'd be like a, an almost impossible task. Cryptos that are really decentralized. It doesn't matter who the SEC goes after, whatever wild goose chase they're on, they can't stop the technology. So people are waking up to that, and the narrative is shifting, and people that know, you know, they're front-running the news, because the more pr people that find out about this, the less of a boogeyman it's going to become. So, you know, the market is deciding as we speak. Now let's move into the actual micro. All right, let's dive into the weeds of it. What people don't realize about Hex in particular when it comes to crypto is that it is such a low liquidity coin when you compare it to Solana or to Ethereum or Bitcoin. So much less liquidity, meaning, again, bigger dumps, but bigger pumps. Hence why we have a V-shaped bottom right here, okay? It tends to happen when there's lower liquidity. And we can see right here, let's just search for Hex on Dex Screener, okay? Look at all the Ethereum pairs. The main Ethereum pairs, you've got 200K, 500K, 300K. You've only got about a million dollars worth of liquidity uh, locked on the Ethereum side of Hex tied to ETH, right? So like $500,000 of Hex on the buy side of Ethereum. Now, let's look at the main Pulse Chain pairs. You've got 24 million paired to PLS, by the way. This is very important. Paired to PLS, and then only 150K tied to DAI, stablecoin. So the stablecoin liquidity on Hex is so, so small. It's abysmally small. If you want to sell Hex, the way to sell it is through Pulse and then to USD, right? So this is why Hex is the most pumpable coin in the entire Pulse Chain ecosystem. Pulse Chain itself has, you know, 25, 30 million dollars of stable stables tied to it on the buy side. Hex itself, I mean, this is the biggest uh, stablecoin pair. It's only $75,000 worth of Hex that's for sale. You know, there's like, just over a billion hacks even for sale right now. Like there's not much left in liquidity. There's not much left on the open market supply. And the liquidity matters a lot more than total supply. All right, everyone gets obsessed with like, oh, what's the market cap? What's the circulating supply? That's the wrong question. You need to be asking yourself, what is the liquidity of these things? So the main pair tied to PLS is 24 million. Divide that by two. That means there's about $12 million of hacks sitting on the buy side and it's linked to pls so if pls goes up hex goes up if hex goes up it drags pls up now it's the most pumpable coin and i say this because if all the new money starts coming into hex yes it drags up pulse and because of that because of the liquidity bonding that drags up all these coins pulse x and inc as well if ethereum goes up you know it drags pulse up and that drags hex up they're all connected by liquidity but because the major liquidity pair, basically like 90% of the total Hex liquidity is tied to Pulse. So if people buy Hex, that means they're buying Pulse first and then they're buying Hex. So that any new money coming in for the most part is driving the price up of the whole ecosystem. And as people FOMO buy the tops, it just makes the green candles that much more elastic. It makes the pumps are bigger again and the dumps are, are bigger. So that's how liquidity works. With lower liquidity, if people don't realize like $12 million worth of hacks, that is might seem like a big number to us, right? But for a whole market, you know, crypto markets have hundreds of millions, maybe even billions of dollars of liquidity. So a tiny little old $12 million. You know, if somebody comes in with, uh, what is it, $150 million and just buys hacks, the price literally does 100x. It's insane. Or more than that, really. So low liquidity is a reason that you shouldn't be ignoring here. Okay, now let's talk about Ethereum itself. This is another piece of on-chain analysis that you really can't argue with here. Ethereum and Bitcoin have been leaving exchanges ever since 2021, ever since the top. Look, 
This is a chart of the Bitcoin on exchanges. The, the blue line here is Ethereum, rather, Ethereum on exchanges. And the white line is the price of Ethereum. So ever since 2021, this is what we have data for right here. September 2021. Remember, that was like the hex top was September 2021. You got 30 million Ethereum on exchanges. And that's going to straight down, down and to the right. So from 30 million Ethereum in 2021, now we've got 18 million, 19 million Ethereum on exchanges. So the amount of Ethereum sitting on exchanges has gone down by one third. And that means that people are withdrawing it to go buy more stuff on chain, to go participate in other opportunities, to go, you know, chasing DeFi yield, uh, using liquid staking derivatives, using uh, borrow lending protocols. People want to do stuff with their Ethereum. This is a, that, this is a signal of people taking money back and holding it themselves. When people put money onto an exchange, think about it. What are the exchanges, guys? The exchanges are the liaison, right? They're the middleman between TradFi and your banking money and your US dollars and your crypto money. So when everyone's rushing to put Ethereum onto exchanges, typically that means they have the intention to sell because they want to dump it for USD and they want to take that USD back to their bank account for the real world. So this has been a reliable signal, uh, basically foreshadowing a bull market. It's insane, right? It's insane. Not a lot of people talk about this. Ethereum leaving exchanges is a huge bull signal for the next year or so. All the pressure is winding up. All the Ethereum is coming back into people's wallets. When that money comes on chain, you should really only be doing crypto on chain, by the way. All that on chain money can flow into alternative L1s like Pulse Chain, like Hex. And who knows how high this thing can pump, right? If we get back to 50 cents, what is that? Like a 75x from here for Hex? So I'm bullish. Obviously, I'm bullish. And not to mention the design of Hex, too. You've got people staked out an average of seven years. It was designed to buy and hold anyway, which, you know, has this emergent property of then that feeds the marketing machine and then people market it more and then people keep buying. So it's a reflexive system, right? People dump on the way down. That makes people scared and they dump more. But at some point, the final dumper will have dumped and the bull market will resume. Right now, I think we're kind of in the disbelief phase because even me, as I'm saying this, I don't want to get overly bullish because we could still retrace, you know, we could have a pullback. And, you know, people have been calling for the bottom, including myself. I mean, I'm just like hoping and praying for the bottom at this point. Something feels a little bit different this time. But again, you know, we could always look at the Wall Street cheat sheet right here. <laughs> We've gone through a deep, dark depression. I know, I, I felt it. I felt the depression. Now we've got a tiny little rally. And I'm sure you're going to have a lot of people, including myself, that are like, oh, I don't want to call for the bull market quite yet. But that's the disbelief rally before everything inevitably cycles. It's all a cycle, my friends. So if you're wondering why Hex is pumping, hopefully that sheds some light on it. Make sure you like, subscribe, share the video, leave a comment. And if you want to get on board to crypto, but you have no idea what you're doing, if you're an absolute beginner, you need to get my course, HexPassiveIncome.com. Limited time offer, 25% off. Everything I know about how to get financially free in crypto, how I did it, how you can do it too, just how to stay safe, how to have the right mindset, and just how to get started with buying and all the basic strategies like hex, uh, hex staking ladders, yield farming on PulseX. It's just all the stuff I'm doing. It's incredible value. Make sure you get that as well. I'll see you guys on the next video.